So this is uh, Randy. I am live streaming on Facebook. So, um, yeah. I'm trying to get this. Africa, Kenya. But it's going to take a little while, so. I figure I'd do something else in the process. Quit that for a minute. Hopefully it's it's downloading or whatever. Um I was watching Mount Everest, which was pretty cool. That is like sixteen minutes crazy. So it's an immersive video. Supposed to be great. What sucks about this is that um, I'm unable to save these things. I lost one of my closest friends, a brother. But they are very okay, honest. Stage. To... You remove the safety net of modern society around you. In those moments of complete exhaustion, you find a physical strength that you didn't know existed. A mental headspace okay, I'm gonna try that to, you like, never explored. Bring it back to the beginning. And that's why, why we climb. And whilst we may see and experience things that we cannot even put into words, oh, we sometimes those Okay, so this is episode one of Climbers Around the World, the birthplace of alpinism. It's my home, my work, and where I learned how to climb. My name is John Griffith, and I live in the heart of the French Alps in a small mountain town called Chamonix, right at the foot of Mont Blanc. I've lived and worked here as a professional climbing cameraman for the last 13 years now, it's and my work Everest. has taken me to all the corners of the globe. All right, so if you head down just like 20 meters, then turn around and come back up again when you're ready. Whoa. My passion in life is to capture humans pushing the boundary of exploration in these remote and far-flung places. Oh my God, There's a first adventure within all of us, and for me, it's about showing that at its extremes. We have stood on the Earth's highest point and dived to its deepest depths, but in between that, there are still so many areas of this planet that man has never seen before. In a world of hyperconnectivity and vast urban expansion, it seems almost unbelievable that there are still areas of this planet that are off the map, off the grid, unseen by human eyes. There's a certain sense of freedom that comes from being in these extreme environments. It's just you and your climbing partner. There is no blueprint, no precedence. Your decisions are born from decades of climbing experience in all sorts of terrain and focused often on maybe just one single move. Wow. One moment in time. I don't know if you can hear me or not or whatever. Early on in my career, I met a climber called Yuli Steck, someone that took the pursuit of alpinism to such levels speed and skill that he would often climb alone unroped just wow. him in the mountains Unroped. he was one of the greatest climbers to have ever lived and i was lucky enough to become his photographer climbing partner and close friend without rope but the cutting edge of any true adventure sport is one lived on the fine line between life and death on the 31st of april 2017 Yuli fell on a mountain next to Mount Everest. And in the blink of an eye, I lost one of my closest friends, a brother. The mountains offer a stark juxtaposition, a deadly terrain cloaked in beauty. But they are a very honest stage. You remove the safety net of modern society around you. Wow. In those moments of complete exhaustion, you find a physical strength that you didn't know existed. 
a mental headspace that you'd never explored. And that's why we climb. And whilst we may see and experience things that we cannot even put into words, sometimes those memories and thoughts will never leave the mountain we create them on. That's the price you sometimes have to pay. In memory of Yuli, I set out to finish off his last great climbing project that he had died on on Mount Everest. A huge climbing route in the Himalayas that had never been done before and that had challenged many before him. In order to pursue my job though, and ultimately to attempt this Everest challenge, wow. I need to be a master of all climbing disciplines. Oh my God. As winter blankets the mountains above town, the water freezes and offers up the most ephemeral of climbing, frozen waterfalls. My very first climbs in Chamonix were on these ice cliffs around me here, and even 13 years later, they still challenge and train me for my next Himalayan adventure. It's a place I'm proud to share with some of my closest friends that I will call brothers. They all have different stories, but share the same common love for the unknown in pursuit of that ever-shifting line between the cutting edge and coming home. And this is our story and what it takes to be a Himalayan climber. My name is Paul Millet and I live in Chamonix all of my life. In the summer, I work in the mountains repairing and creating new hiking paths for climbers, walkers and mountain bikers. It's a physical job that is rewarding because I feel like I'm constantly giving something back to nature. In the winter time, though, I swap my shovel for my skis and tear down steep mountains as fast as I can. For me, steep skiing is my passion. In the old days, we used to ski a lot more conservatively. But now the style is to find beautiful open and steep mountain faces with no tracks and to ski them as fast as possible with as few turns as possible. It's the closest feeling you can come to flying without actually being in the air. The movement. The weightlessness, just supported by snowflakes underfoot traveling at 60 miles per hour. Your body is constantly moving against the forces of the mountain. Well, he's gonna Your brain ski is down the terrain thing? ahead. It's an incredible synergy between mind and body. You always feel at the limit of what your brain can process and how fast your legs and body can react to the terrain ahead. There is so much history in this valley, in the world of steep skiing, and still so much being written every year. I feel incredibly honored to be a part of it. Oh. Wow. Wow, they're like so small compared to the mountain. They're not scared? My name is Cora Pesce and I'm a professional climber from Italy. I've lived in the Chamonix Valley for over 17 years now and I made my way from the flat plains of Italy to doing any job that allowed me to gain access to these huge granite mountains. In my younger days, I worked as a kitchen boy in a high mountain hut and went off climbing by myself in the mountains on my days off. I guess I was lucky to survive those things. Gosh, you know. I learned to ski and climb everything inside exactly the way I always envisioned doing, without limits. I love how the seasons unfold, and now in winter, I watch the mountains slowly put their winter dress on. 
tiny ice drips start decorating rock walls and suddenly a climb is born. I prefer the mountains in winter though, they feel more alive. Everything seems to be working against you and the mountain puts up her hardest defenses. God, you ain't scared? You almost fell. Dude. You try and tiptoe up it using just the tiny edges of your ice axes and crampons, scraping and position on invisible edges on the granite. That's the challenge that brings me here time and time again. The balancing act between the physical and the mental. It's strangely meditative. There is nothing else capturing your thoughts. Your mind and body are focused. Nothing else matters. Not much for the feet though. Ah. Woo. Ah. A bit better now. Ah. Oh. The winter offers us so much, but as the sun starts to creep higher in the sky, so does the heat of spring and the start of summer, and the cooling of the rock. I'm definitely a primate, I just can't seem to live without climbing. My name is Adam George, and I'm a professional mountain guide. I started climbing in the White Mountains of New Hampshire when my love for hiking in the outdoors grew into something a little more adventurous. My climbing career started when I was just 15 years old, and by 18, I had climbed El Capitan in Yosemite. Okay, here I've got some gear for me for it. Right. Cool. Need something else, maybe? Uh, I'm actually get the draws. Alright, so, right, so where are we heading? I'm equally at home skiing, rock climbing, ice climbing, or alpine climbing. But rock climbing has always been my favorite discipline. There's something so pure oh about God. just using your hands and feet in the rock. Every move flows into the next one, every contortion of your body, and the synergy between hand and feet matches effortlessly. From an outside perspective, it seems like a battle, but in reality, it's like a dance. Watch me. What the hell? Yo, how's he doing that? I have forged some incredible relationships through climbing. You build a level of trust when you tie into a rope with someone that goes beyond a casual friendship. They become family. The relationships I build along the way is what keeps bringing me back. Those friendships born from intense situations in serious places have molded me into the person I am today. There really duck camps in there, huh? There's pretty small camps. I'm pretty heavy. Watch me. Oh, man, good work, yeah. 
Paris. With just ah. the above. With just a tiny bit above. <laughs> my name is Ben O'Connor Croft, and I work as a lift operator to help fund my mountain guides course. It's been a very long four years to finally get to this stage, but I'm proud of soon becoming a qualified mountain guide. I moved over from Sheffield in the UK about 15 years ago, following in my dad's footsteps. He died in the mountains when I was still a young boy. I guess it must be something in our blood. And I now see what he saw in these places. Mm -hmm. It is so beautiful out here, and I find the challenge presented by alpinism to be incredibly rewarding. Climbing huge mountain ridges is definitely one of my favorite sides of the sport. I love the exposure on either side of a steep ridge. You just can't beat it. And you always feel like you're in serious terrain on these kind of climbs. I'm definitely a people person though, and guiding is all about taking people into these incredible locations that as climbers, we get to. Watching people's reactions is priceless. I know that I've given them an wow. experience that will be imprinted on their brain forever. It's crazy. How's he doing it? It's insane. Wow. It's so beautiful. Is somebody over there? Is that a rock? Is that a person? Yes. Just wait. Give me like five minutes. Wow. This is so beautiful. I know it sounds cliche to say it, but it's all about the journey rather than just the summit itself. It's about the process as a whole. The highs and lows shared on the way to the summit that make climbing so addictive. Jenny, I'm recording. We're all a big family Quiet. out here. We live and work in these mountains. Okay, and hey, ultimately, speaking. they train us for the biggest mountains on earth. The you want to see this? Yuli was a close friend to us all. We sure, hope John sure. will do him proud on Mount Everest. Wow. I hope that's it. <clears throat> 16 minutes of. No. Oh. It's recorded to Facebook.